On today's show, Ford dumps billions into EV R&D. Continental extends EV driving range with a new type of glass. And General Motors uses wind power to build big SUVs. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for December 11th of 2015. As we keep telling you, mobility services are a huge threat to the automotive industry as we know it. If more people are sharing cars, fewer will be buying one. And that's why Ford is experimenting with its own ride-sharing solutions. It just launched a pilot program at its Dearborn, Michigan campus to provide its employees with an on-demand shuttle service. The company is using four transit vans that have been modified to carry six to eight passengers offer free Wi-Fi, USB charging ports at each seat, and personal storage space. The service is kind of a hybrid of riding a taxi and a bus. Ford developed its own algorithms to determine which shuttle should pick up a rider and to tell them exactly when they should arrive at their destination, even before they get on the bus. Speaking of Ford, it's investing an additional $4.5 billion to develop plug-ins and EVs. It plans to add 13 electrified vehicles to its lineup by the end of the decade, when over 40% of its nameplates globally will be electrified. The company also revealed that the new Focus EV will have a 100-mile range and will launch next year. And if you want to learn more about Ford's R&D efforts, check out our AutoLine This Week from earlier this year, where John visited the company's Innovation Center in Palo Alto, California. Just look for a link in today's transcript. And while Ford is turning to mobility services and EVs to reduce its carbon footprint, GM is doing it in another way. The company partnered with EDP Renewables North America to start using wind power at its Arlington assembly plant, which builds its big SUVs. The wind turbines will create 115 million kilowatt hours of energy which is enough power to build 125,000 vehicles a year, or more than half of the plant's output. The facility will start using wind power at the end of next year and help the company save $2.8 million in energy costs annually. Still to come, the new Chevy Malibu Hybrid is posting some interesting numbers in efficiency and price. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Wouldn't it be nice to never have to mess with a sun visor ever again? The giant supplier Continental will be showing off what it calls intelligent glass control at the Consumer Electronics Show. It's not an entirely new concept. We've seen it in rear view mirrors, and Mercedes even used it in sunroofs and rear side windows but Continental will be the first to control the function automatically on all windows, including the windshield. For legal and safety reasons, only the areas where a sun visor can reach can be darkened on the windshield. The technology works by placing a film embedded with particles into the glass that can be manipulated with electricity. With no current, the particles arrange themselves randomly, effectively darkening the window. With a voltage applied, the particles align themselves in parallel, so more light comes through. With this technology, Continental says that air conditioning systems can be made smaller, which will contribute to light weighting and improve efficiency. In fact, Conti says this will cut CO2 emissions by a good 4 grams per kilometer and can increase the range of electric vehicles by around 5.5%. The new Chevy Malibu seems better in almost every way. And now the automaker is making the hybrid version look pretty attractive too. The car will be available with a starting price under $30,000, and GM is estimating combined fuel economy to come in at 47 mpg. To achieve such a high number, Chevy is using technology and knowledge learned from the new Chevy Volt. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It, and John will be here to respond to your correspondence. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. 
This is the human element at work. Tao. And now it's time for You Said It. Earlier this week, we told you which vehicles made the finalist list for the North American Car and Truck and Utility of the Year awards. The finalists for Car of the Year are the Honda Civic, Chevrolet Malibu, and Mazda MX-5 Miata. The Truck and Utility finalists are the Volvo XC90, the Nissan Titan XT, and the Honda Pilot. So then we asked you which one of these vehicles are actually going to win the awards, and boy, did we get a lot of feedback. Joe Engelhart believes he knows the answer. Hands down, truck, Titan XT, auto, Miata. But Dave Lewis doesn't see it that way. XC90 for truck and Malibu for car, he says. And that's exactly how Swing Low 33 sees it. My top honor pick for the best North American car of the year is the Chevy Malibu. Best truck would go to the Volvo XC90, he says. You know, wow, I think we're seeing a pattern developing here. Westride says, I think it'll be the Malibu and the XC90. But Doug Watson has a variation on that theme. Nakoti prediction, Mazda MX-5, Volvo XC90. And Lux says, Honda all the way. Honda Pilot for Truck of the Year and Honda Civic for Car of the Year. And you know, that could happen. In 2006, Honda swept the awards with the then new Civic and the Ridgeline. Ford swept them in 2010 with the Fusion Hybrid and Transit Connect, and Chevrolet swept them in 2014 with the Corvette and Silverado. And finally, Vince 33X says, Nakoti equals new Honda Civic, Natrakoti, I kind of like that, Volvo XC90. And Vince 33X, I'm with you. I think those two will be the winners. And we're going to get the official results on January 11th, when the winners are announced at the first press conference at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. And that wraps up this week's worth of Autoline Dailies. Go out, have a great weekend, and remember, we'll be right back here on Monday bringing you the kind of reporting that keeps you up to speed on the news, technology, and products that power the automotive industry.